everybody. Welcome to the Underwater Photography Show. Uh, today we're doing a little bit of a different one. Um, we are reviewing random Instagram images uh, from various Instagram photographers. Uh, I'm Matthew Sullivan. I'm Alex Mustard. And we do hope this will be a regular feature on the channel. Definitely. Um, so a little bit of background as to why we're doing this. Uh, back when, I think it was around, this, around the same time, COVID started and Reels on Instagram popped off. Um, and when that happened, engagement for photographers uh, took a nosedive. Um, so my little way of fighting back uh, was just to start resharing as many pictures that caught my eye for one reason or another um, to try to help people be able to find other photographers and try to get pictures that I thought were cool, uh, a little more attention. Um, That's it, a great, great thing, because I, I think, you know, we all feel like it's really hard to find, you know, we we, know, we all want to see great pictures, but we don't always know where where to find them, who to follow. So. Yeah. And I, I initially I was only doing it because I enjoyed it. And then I started getting a lot of positive feedback from the people whose pictures I was sharing. Um, and then it got to the point where I was having a lot of positive feedback from random people who were enjoying seeing all the new pictures and finding new photographers. Um, so now it's something that I do, if not daily, probably every other day or at least a few times a week. Um, and I share them for all sorts of various reasons. Sometimes it's just because it's a friend's photo and I, you know, I want to support them. Sometimes it's an awesome animal or awesome subject. Sometimes it's just an, a really, really cool picture. Um, so we have some of all of those today, uh, and uh, with that, we can probably kick off the first one. Right. Well, the first image is from a photographer who I know, but you probably don't personally. Nope. <laughs> um, and the, their handle on Instagram is Mark Underwater, and it's um, a photo um, that Mark took up in Scotland. So do you want to um, say why you put it in? Yeah, so I... I generally find and i don't know if this was shot with a macro lens or not i don't know if he put it in the description and i can't remember but generally i enjoy um subjects that are small in frame uh if you can pull it off especially underwater because it seems to be a much it seems to be harder to do underwater pleasingly than it does on land there's a lot of bird photographers or insect photographers who are really good about um making their subject very small in frame and still having it be a nice image. It seems to be a lot harder to do underwater. Um, so I enjoyed the fact that he has it very small in the frame. I like the, the I don't know if this is how he shot it, but the top down lighting, um, cause it gives a lot of contrast and texture to all those yeah. uh, snail corpses on, on the bottom. Um, and whether or not, I don't know if the, that starfish species eats those snails, but it looks kind of cool to have this big predatory starfish with this field of deceased uh, snails in its wake. Um, I thought that was really cool. Yeah, it's an uh, amazing backdrop. It's yeah. um, the dive site this is taken at. I've never dived it myself, actually, but I, 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 I know where it is. I, I think this dive site is in um, a sea lock very close to the town of Oban on the west coast of Scotland. And the dive site is in an area where the whole lock, the whole fjord, drains to a very narrow entrance. And the, the current is so strong that the entrance is not known as, as, a, as a pinch point in the lock. It's actually known as a waterfall. Um, and it's called the, the dive site is called the Falls of Laura, um, where the water comes so fast it looks like a waterfall in the water. And you have to dive it very carefully on slack water to dive it. And the reason these snail shells are there is that the current's so strong that it carries these shells in the current. And the shells are just the right size and weight to be accumulated in a specific area by the current. So the current, you know, the finer sand blows further up and the heavier rocks f go further down. And just at this particular point, it's the right place for all these shells to be deposited. So you, the ocean has sorted these shells out by the incredible currents in this area. So it's just a, it's a natural, seabed um, um, sediment but it's just a sediment made completely of this one type of work shell so it's pretty cool it is, I, and i had no idea so now it's it, it's a cool explanation as to why it's why it's like that and really nice to see the starfish uh just crawling across mm -hmm. such an unusual setting right i'm going to move us on to the next one um and the next one is um from the us i'm guessing Yep. Um, taken by, I'm going to always just use the handles because yep. the aim of this is to promote people's use, um, Instagram um, feeds. And this is by Marco Matza. Yep. So 
The jellyfish bloom in Monterey is very well known. It happens every year, and there's thousands and thousands of pictures of these jellyfish. Um, Marco does 99% of his photography on free dive, which if you go through his feed, makes it even, I mean, this one's at the surface, but if you go through his feed, it makes it even more remarkable because he's shooting macro things down on the bottom and he's shooting, you know, big kelp scenes from down on the bottom. And it's something I envy because my free diving skills are pretty mediocre. Um, <laughs> but I, this one has always, since the first time I saw it, I've loved this one. I, it's a really, I think, powerful picture of these jellyfish. I love the sun rays. I love that they all seem to be converging on one point in the distance, um, but that the, the few in the front are still still kind of that one main one in the front there. I don't know why I'm pointing at my screen as if you can see it, but you know that main one in the front is that still <laughs> still the subject that draws your eye, um, and it's just a really really cool scene, just packed with all these jellyfish, mm -hmm. um, and it's rare that a jellyfish picture is something that I go back to and look at again and again. Um, but this one makes me do that. And I, every one, every couple of months, I just randomly go and look at this one and it makes me happy. So it felt like a good one to, to sh share for this little review. Yeah. For this first one, moving on to our next one, it's from him, Joe 88. And it yep. looks to me like it's another one from California. It is indeed. Uh, this is from Joe Platko who lives out in Monterey or near Monterey. Um, the main reason I like this one is just because it's a current day picture that he shot on film. Um, and he has a lot of really cool film images uh, on his his Instagram. Um, but I also like the fact that he shot it with a slow shutter. The shark is still nice and static, but you can get the movement of the kelp in the background. Um, so between the the aesthetic, the film aesthetic, which I s still really like, uh, and then the fact that he has the nice the motion, and the still shark, uh, I really enjoyed that. And it's not an image I've seen from Monterey before. Usually if you see the pictures of the leopard sharks, they're in very shallow water. It's usually just a sandy bottom. Um, so this one's a, a bit different for a leopard shark image. Yeah, I'm more used to seeing pictures of them from South California as well. So yeah. I, I actually didn't realize they had them in Monterey too. So, so I will That's say- my lack of knowledge. That, well, everything, yeah. <laughs> I may be wrong and this one may have been SoCal, um, but either way, I have not seen one with the kelp quite like this. Uh, again, I usually see them with just barren sandy bottoms and they're still beautiful sharks, but it's nice to see one with a different setting. Yeah. I've never seen one. I'd love to photograph one at some point. Right. Moving us along. Our next one is from Derek Singer photography. So Derek is a Seattle guy. He shoots a lot of wolf eels. Wolf eels have a special place in my heart. They're one of my favorite animals, period. Um, and I have not met this particular one, but he is very well known and famous at this one particular dive site. Um, I think his name, I think this is Joaquin cause he has that. Yep. His name is Joaquin after Joaquin Phoenix. He has that same split lip. Um, but apparently he's a very, he's a very outgoing wolf field. He's used to divers. Um, and my, one thing I really like about this is that it's, I like close up portraits as well. Uh, dramatic lighting portraits. This one. If, you, if you've encountered a wolf eel, you know that they're either very shy or they're friendly and gentle. Uh, but I like the fact that this one looks pretty fearsome, especially with the dramatic lighting and his teeth are all gnarly and poking out like that. Um, so I, I just, it's a dramatic lighting portrait of one of my favorite, favorite animals, period. Um, and this is one I have saved in my phone as well, like the jellyfish, because every once in a while I like to go back and look at it. Um, and I... I hope eventually I get to shoot some wolf eels again. It's been a long time since I have, uh, and I think I could do better than what I've gotten in the past with them. So um, maybe eventually. Yeah, no, I mean, I think it's really nice point you made there about saving it on your phone. I think one of the most important things you can do as a photographer, and I know all great photographers that I know do it to this day, and you'd be amazed some of the big names who, you know, really enjoy looking at the photos of, you know, very new photographers, but looking at other people's photos, I used to keep a folder on my desktop called Inspirational Images for exactly that reason. You know, I just, when I saw great stuff, I'd drag it in there. And then, you know, when I wanted to remind myself of new ideas, great ways of, of shooting things, you know, dive into that collection. Yeah. Right. Moving us along, we're now into chilling.with.fish, um, <laughs> also up from the Pacific Northwest. Yes. Uh, so I have yet to see a candy striped shrimp. Um, I've done a lot of Pacific Northwest trips and I have a few white whales, uh, this being one of them. 
Um, supposedly, I haven't dived a lot of the sites that are good for them, uh, but I still feel like it, at this point, I probably should have just stumbled across one. Um, yeah, it's nice to that big, big anemone as well. Really, they're uh, they're beautiful shrimp. Uh, so I like that. I like the fact that I haven't seen one, so that I'm I'm drawn to that just because I haven't. And there's that little bit of little bit of jealousy in there. Um, but then I also like that they used a really narrow depth of field. The shrimp is razor sharp, um, and the the anemone kind of melts away in the background, but you still know that it's an anemone. Uh, and I like the I like the pink too. Um, and I don't know if they normally hang out on pink anemones or if there's yeah, other. Yeah, they're usually around anemones, but not anything like as cooperatively posed as this. They tend to hang out on the base, and mm. this is you know a wonderful opportunity with one. Um, they can be quite a lot bigger than people imagine. I think people often think they're really small, and I think I like the shallow depth of field here because to me as a photographer it makes me feel it's small. Um, do yeah. you know who Chilling with Fish is? Um, I don't. And they stumble that's kind of a cool them. thing. It's you know it's about appreciating people. <laughs> Uh, yep. But yeah, really nice. Um, I haven't done that much geographically varied diving in that part of the world, but I find um, Browning Wall in uh, Browning Pass is a, a great site for these always. They're kind of super reliable there. Um, so yeah. my, my issue with Browning is that my other one of my other white whales is a giant Pacific octopus. So every time I'm up there, I'm just shooting wide, hoping I'm going to get one, and then I end up not seeing one and yeah. not seeing any of the macro critters, but eventually it'll happen. It's always good to be in a destination, though, where you know that you've, you know, you need to do all the lenses. Right, I'm going to move us along to the next one. And this one is by by John Anderson Photo. Yep. So John's a good friend. Um, I actually am waiting on him to send me a small print of this to put up in my house. Um, I, I love light beams. They're one of my favorite things to photograph. Uh, and if you get a good day in the kelp forest, you can get some crazy light beams as they come down through the different like kelp strands and the leaves. Uh, so I like it for that. And then I also like it because the I, you know, centered compositions can be hit or miss. Uh, but I think the starfish works really well. Dead, and it's not centered up up top, but it's dead center of the frame. Kind um, of the star top and the star bottom. Yeah. So it looks like the beams are coming down just to light up that starfish. Really nice scene overall, um, and you know, I, I Monterey has a special place in my heart. So there's a little bit of emotion for me picking this one as well. Uh, but every time I, when I was going back and looking at pictures to pull for this, this one was also saved on in one of my uh, saved uh, Instagram collections. Mm. Uh, so it's an easy one to pull for this first uh, review. Yeah, really nice, um, really nice picture. You've got a couple more to go. Um, but I, I, I really enjoyed um, John's photography, and I think this is a, a, a lovely shot. Right, moving us along um, to um, Byron underscore score. I can't read that other word. Um, Conroy. Yeah. I know. <laughs> a friend I don't of both like, of ours who's yeah, probably going like to get a fair amount of grief on this channel. So yeah. I don't like to say too many nice things about him, but this is a good picture. This is a really nice picture of a flamboyant cuttlefish. They are arguably my favorite animal in the world. Um, and he likes to tease me because he has seen a ton of them and I have seen maybe three and I have no pictures to show for it. So um, I, the, anytime I see a good flamboyant cuttlefish picture, it automatically gets saved. And what I especially liked about this one is that a lot of times when you see the, the, I call them flambies. When you see the flambies photographed, they're very often snooted or it's a black background or something like that. So I like that he chose to go with a narrow depth of field, uh, a bit smaller in the frame, um, and to you know leave the background in there. Uh, and it it works well. I the it, he I don't know if he did it in post or not, but I like the the bluish or that might be purple. I'm partially colorblind, so I can't really tell colors, but. Um, I like what it, whatever color that is. I like how he did it that. It's kind of a yeah. It's kind of a, a bluey purple. So. Yeah. But but uh -huh. but low saturation. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I like pose on the cuttlefishes. I like I love watching them do that when they walk around and they just wave those two front tentacles up. So I like that he caught it in the full rays. Yeah. No, it's a really nice picture. It's um, it, you know, what I would say it's you know, all the details have been correctly attended to in this shot. You know, it's it's the perfect pose moment, really ideal depth of field, turned an ugly background into a beautiful background. It's really, uh, really a nice picture. 
Um, so yeah, probably we've got the wrong name on this one. So. <laughs> right, let's move on to our final picture um, for today. Number eight by yep. SDM Diving. So this is uh, Eli Martinez. Um, I'm sure a lot of people know who he is. Uh, this right whales have been on my list to do for a very long time. I don't know if I'll ever have the chance, but uh, he got a really, really beautiful portrait of this. It's making direct eye contact with him, which I think is the main thing that, that drew me to it. You can tell it's looking that whale is looking directly at him. Um, and it's one of those beautiful white calves, which are really unique. Uh, that's a bucket list animal. If I, if I had the chance to see one, would be one of the white calves. Uh, and he has some spectacular images from this this most recent trip. Sorry, Naya's making chaos in the, in the, over in the corner there. That's all right. Yeah. Well, we are looking at a pup on the screen, so. Um, so I, it's just a it's a beautiful moment, I think, capturing that eye contact between he and the whale. Uh, I like the light coming in from kind of top in front of the whale. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just a beautiful animal overall and one that I would really like to spend time with. And uh, he has another image from this shoot that's spectacular. Yeah, uh, I know the one you mean. I think that's one of the <laughs> nicest whale shots I've seen. Yeah, um, but I, I like this one too, mostly for the eye contact and for the, the uniqueness of the white, the white whale. And you are drawn to cute young white yes. pups with yeah, black spots. <laughs> Looks just like my dog, yep. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's a, a great place for us to wrap this up today. Thanks for watching the Underwater Show, and we hope to be back again soon, and I hope you'll be joining us.